especially since we were inspired by the Soviet Union on a lot of different fronts, right? So this could have been yeah. factors. True, true. This could have been, and I now fail to understand why it wasn't. Um, so right. putting the word secular in your preamble doesn't really make you secular. When you are genuinely secular, you will treat all religions uh, in the same manner. And clearly, you're not treating all religions in the same manner. I'll tell you how. Uh, I want to move to the next part of Article 25. So Article 25 first gives you these rights. Then it goes on to say, and I'll read it from here. I have it open here in front of me. It says, nothing in this article shall affect the operation of any existing law or prevent the state from making any law. Uh, making any law providing for social welfare and reform or going open of Hindu religious institutions of a public character uh, and full stop. And why is this problematic? Because it's okay to say that, uh, that this article will not prevent the state from making any law which provides for social welfare and reform. That's perfectly understandable because as a, I think as a community, Hindus are, have been open to reform, very open to reform. But when you specifically point out and say that uh, throwing open of Hindu religious institu institutions of a public character is also something uh, that the state is allowed to do. Now, why is it specifically pointed out here? And I think um, and it all starts from here, I feel. Because, Absolutely. These are the questions we need yeah. to move on. Yeah, so why have you specifically mentioned it, you know? In a country where there are so many religions, where there's Hinduism, there's Parsi, there is Buddhist, there's Jain, there's Islam, there is uh, Jewish, there's, as in when, when India is really truly a melting pot, you specifically single out a religion and say, oh, also this religion needs reform. And uh, that the state will do. I agree that every religion needs to be reformed. And but why this treatment? Uh, why this? Um, uh, why why is there this sudden like? Oh, when it comes to uh, Hinduism, we are up and uh, running to reform it. I am very happy because I am reaping the benefits of that. But when it comes to any other religion, you don't want to reform it. You know right. that sort of uh, creates this communal tension. When sorry, last point. Mm -hmm. Uh, when this I think comes from this uh, essential um, sort of this internal feeling that we are different from them right. so somewhere the uh, Nehruji had this in his mind that that other okay they have to be treated in a particular way the majority has to be treated in a particular way it comes from there a very uh, I think a great uh, phrase was coined um, and it's been used in a recent book that I read also. And I, I we discussed this. It's the, he called it the soft bigotry of lowered expectations. Right. So what I think this phrase really means is that your expectation from the minority community uh, is different. Like you think that if that community's um, personal laws are reformed, that that. I don't know, as in that that it won't be appropriate or it wouldn't. Uh, uh, it I I fail to understand actually what could be the thought behind it, but uh, in in that manner you're actually being a bigot. Soft mm -hmm. bigotry of lower expectation has been the uh, has been the manner in which Nehru. I I don't want to call it the Congress Party because it's uh, it's truly the it's let's call it the Nehru Dynast Party because Congress. Mm -hmm. Party had uh, is an older party pre-independence, which had a lot of people in it, like the Gandhi. But this uh, Nehru Dynast Party has really taken to it, used it as a political propaganda, um, and a Muslim appeasement should be there. Like, should be is actually I I'm not saying should be is their banner statement. I think. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net.
धन्यवाद नमस्कार